Yep, it's stupid. It's a stupid effect, and I'll explain why in this video. And then towards the end of the video, I'll explain a much better way to create stereo width using a similar concept, but a much just better way of doing it. Because the house effect is stupid. It makes no sense at all when you actually think about what we're doing. So let me explain. The house effect is one of, or am I even saying it right? I don't know. H A something this. I've probably got it in the title. It's an effect that creates stereo width by delaying one side relative to the other. So we have two channels of audio information, a left side and a right side. If we delay one side relative to the other, which we could do in one of a million different ways, we could use a track delay or we could use a simple delay. The specifics aren't important. But if we delay one side relative to the other, this creates the illusion of width. Because if you imagine what a wide sound would sound like, let's say it's from, from over here, the sound will go, I'm a sound, and it's going to hit this ear before this ear. So this ear is effectively going to hear noise delayed relative to this ear. We could do the same from over here. Moo, I'm a sound, I'm the sound moo. I'm going to hit this ear before this ear, so this ear is going to hear it delayed relative to this here. That's the idea behind the Hass effect. The specific time itself depends on the type of sound you're using. If you have a percussive sound, then the time you need is much smaller than a non-percussive sound. So it's, there's no standard timing. It's an important point there, by the way, there is no standard timing. It does depend on the sound, as I say, for percussive sounds. You might only need six or seven milliseconds, but for a pad or a synth, you may need 40 or 50 milliseconds to create the illusion of width. Now here's the problem. It's not mono compatible. And I know what you're thinking, we don't listen in mono, so why is that even an issue? We listen in stereo. So multiply a about mono compatibility, but we do actually listen in mono more than you actually realize, even though we're also kind of listening in stereo. Think about this. If you're listening to your music on a laptop, so let's say the the, the your tunes, your part to party, part A, and someone's listening playing songs on a laptop or just some speakers in the speakers even let's say there's a party a part a and they're playing sound in the corner of the room so the speakers are in the corner of the room and you're standing the other side of the room then even though technically the track itself is stereo if you were to stand basically where the speakers are by the time the sound gets to you the other side of the room it's actually mono because if you, I mean, think about this visually in terms of like just like just imagine imagination. Imagine so. Imagine the speakers are in the distance, stereo. But if you're in the distance, then the, the way the sound comes to you is effectively mono. So even though the track itself is stereo in the distance, by the time the sound gets to you, it's actually mono. Try this for yourself. Get a laptop, put it in the corner of the room, or just even on the desk, six foot away. If you take a laptop and put it six foot away on a desk and listen to the sound, you'll be listening effectively in mono because of the, the distance of the speakers on the laptop. It could only be this far. Stereo speakers, say, this far apart on the laptop, then you're actually hearing it in mono because there's, there's no stereo separation. Take your laptop or if you have a, it could be a one of these in B-roll. Take one of these, a portable speaker or something, and just listen to it whilst just technically it's a stereo speaker. You're hearing it in mono. And think about what that means, but this has effect. So the has effect is delaying one side relative to the other. But if you effectively combine that to one signal, combining it to mono, then what you're really doing is adding a delay. So if you have the has effect with say a 10 millisecond, let's say 10 millisecond gap between the left side and the right, so a 10 millisecond has effect thing, then when you're hearing it in mono, you're really hearing it as a 10 millisecond delay, which isn't good. It's not good. That's not good. That's bad. No. Disaster. In the case of, say, a synth or a pad, that 10 millisecond delay effectively causes phasing, uh, which, which sounds bad. And in the case of, say, a percussive sound, it's actually heard as a, as a delay. It's like, goes, it's uh, imagine take a percussive sound. Yeah, I can, I can show you. So if I have a percussive sound and then I add a 10 millisecond delay, sounds bad. And that's really what you're doing when you're applying the Hass effect. And if you don't believe me, try this for yourself. Take a laptop, configure the Hass effect for a percussive sound, and place the laptop more than two foot away from you. And you'll be hearing it in mono, and you'll hear this ridiculous issue. So bad. It just makes sense if you delay one side relative to the other, and then you combine these to mono. Effectively, you're applying a delay, which just 
doesn't sound good. As I say, it causes phasing or a weird sort of delayed flubberness. Flubberness? Flubberness? It should be a word beginning with fl- uh, but I don't know if there's a good word for it. I've given you an audio example, but it's important to also try this for yourself to understand this. Ooh, also, uh, before I tell you the, the much better way to create stereo width, do this experiment for yourself. And also, it's, it's, it's more nuanced than that. So even in the situations where you can hear it a stereo width, say on headphones or on studio monitors, the time you want to offset depends on the speakers you listen on and how far apart they are and where your head is. So a 10 millisecond offset may sound great on headphones, but sound completely wrong on monitors and vice versa. So all that time you spend configuring the Hass effect, getting the offset just right for the sound you have. Remember, the offset also depends on the sound you're using. So all that time you spend dialing it in is time wasted because whilst you may be dialing it in for monitors, you're almost certainly getting it wrong for headphones. and. People listen to music on all sorts of devices. And oftentimes they listen effectively in mono, as I've said, because if, if, two, if a stereo speaker system is in the distance, even just not that far away from you, you're hearing it in mono because the left side and the right side is reaching you at effectively the same time and it's reaching you both ears at the same time. So it's actually mono. So there's just no way to configure it correctly. It will always be wrong in almost every situation. In fact, the best case scenario is it sounds good in one situation, and that's it. There's no way to get the house effect to work in more than pretty much one situation. It's it's stupid. But multiplier, I, how else am I supposed to make something wide? Many ways. Now there are some pretty cool widening tools, such as the is it called stereo eyes or, or mono eyes or, or something. And this in Ozone. So there are some specific proprietary algorithmy things and some plugins that are very very good at taking a mono sound and making it wide in a way that at least sometimes works in mono. But a much better way is to do what is does this have a name? I don't think it does have a name. I'm going to call it the multiplier approach effect stereo widening trick knowledge technique. To create width, have something similar but different on the left and the right channels. So in the case of, say, hi-hats, have a similar hi-hat but a different hi-hat on the left side relative to the right. Therefore, it sounds like one sound. Because the sounds are similar, our brain perceives it to be one thing, but because they're different, it sounds wide. Imagine listening to a crowd or being in a crowd of people, which sounds wide. You're perceiving it as one thing because the sound going into one is similar to the sound going into the other. But because the sound's different, remember, because the sound's coming at you from the sides, it sounds wide. And I think that's why this effect works. I mean, that's just one example of a hi-hat, but it could be white noise. If you want to create wide white noise, simply have one white noise on one side and a different on another. Maybe Gaussian on one side and triangular on the other. Or even just different pieces of the same type of white noise. If you take 10 seconds of white noise and take two seconds from here, two seconds from here, and put one on the left, one on the right, and there's an airplane outside. So you put one bit of white noise on the left and one bit on the on the white, not on the white, white noise. Put the white noise on the right. That's confusing. Take some white noise and put some of it on the left ear and some of it on the right. It'll be similar. It will both sound like white noise, but because they'll be different, it will sound wide. And this should be your approach to pretty much anything where you want to create a width. In the case of, say, a clap, for example, find two different layered claps and put one on the left, one on the right. Different though, so that when they're then combined to mono, it just sounds like a thicker layered clap. Because that's the, that's the key here. You want to make sure that when it's converted back to mono, it still sounds good. And in the case of, say, a layered clap that looks a bit like this with all those percussive transients, so just a whole bunch of transients, if you like, you could take, say, a whole bunch of transients on one side and a whole bunch on the other. And if they're different, if you then combined them to mono, so combine them to one, it still sound like a layered clap. And therefore, it still sounds great, it still sounds good. And as I say, I mean, this applies to pretty much anything in, in the case of hi-hats. If you had this hi-hat and this hi-hat, they're similar, wait, wait, They're similar but different, and so when you put one on the left, if you put one on the left and one on the right, it will sound wide. It will sound similar, so the same sound source, but different, and so it sounds wide. This is in fact a little oh, words are difficult. It's got all in the muddle from the left and the right, because it's it's probably right to you, isn't it? But it's left to me, but it's the wrong side, but it's your right side. There are words 
This has been one of my favorite tricks to add texture to say basses or pretty much anything. If you want to add some wide texture to a synth or a pad or a bass, take two different but similar textures, put one on the left, one on the right, or from your perspective, one on the right, one on the left, and then it will, it will still sound like one texture, but it will sound wide because they're different. So that, that's the key concept here. To make something wide, make sure it's on the left or the right, similar but different. Similar, so it sounds like the same sound source, but different, and therefore, so that sentence was bad. To make something wide, have something similar but different. Similar, so it's the same sound source, but different, and so it sounds wide. I think to think about sounds coming at you from the sides. It'll be similar, but but different. So wide. Probably really dark now, isn't it, on the, the clouds? Hmm. That's cool. Lights flashing. The house effect, it's stupid. But I've given you a better way, so that's okay. Realized I probably could have held these or something as a prop. Catch you guys in the flippity flip.